so uh, a very good morning to everyone i hope my voice is audible to all yes sir audible all right so like this is a session in line for our indian forest service interview which is beginning from the next week right so uh, firstly i would like to welcome rajneesh sir he is with us today so just before giving uh, giving over to sir i just want to briefly introduce sir to you all right so sir has has a vast experience of serving in uh, madhya pradesh forest department for over 25 years right so sir presently is serving as deputy director in panch tiger reserve and like sir has joined madhya pradesh forest department 25 years ago right so sir has accumulated wisdom of over uh, of around 3 decades and uh, because of the interest in uh, wildlife sir has also undergone a special module special training in wildlife management at wildlife institute of india at dehradun right and like after being an uh, range officer for over uh, 12 years sir you know cracked open sir sir appeared for the state pcs and sir uh, got into uh, got uh, selected in as assistant conservator of forest right and then after that sir served at various tiger reserve of madhya pradesh including kanha uh, tiger reserve and panch tiger reserve and sir was also posted at at the wildlife headquarters of Madhya Pradesh at the state capital. Later, Sir got inducted into IFS, and uh, the primary area of interest of Sir includes related to conservation, the awareness, the education, and uh, the work related to community and forest staff welfare. Right, and the field of expertise of Sir is mass capture of herbivores, uh, transportation, and the rescue operation, which is the primary role of forest officer. Uh, especially working in the wildlife domain right sir has was, was also associated with uh, sir was also associated with madhya pradesh tiger foundation society uh, for a long time and sir has is also uh, a mentor to many aspirants right from the ground level to you know the forest guard to ranger to acf to a lot of indian forest service officer right sir was you know uh, mentor to my my, my own self when i was preparing and appearing for interviews and for even for this year the uh, ifs candidate sir has been mentoring a lot of candidates right so sir firstly uh, we are really thankful uh, for taking time out of your schedule and coming for this session to help you know giving a deeper perspective to the students so like uh, like now without now without uh, taking more time i would like sir to please take over and, and carry on the presentation thank you ma'am so uh, good morning everyone and uh, there is no you know extra effort to take out this time because as i mentioned and my aunt also mentioned that my field of interest or passion is to 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 create awareness about the wildlife related issues and to me such you know session is one of that activity and uh, the the today's session will be about the wildlife management in madhya pradesh so but uh, obviously the wildlife management uh, practices are more or less similar across the nation though uh, depending upon the landscape and sometime also about the species there may be some uh, you know place specific management intervention but uh, the the central indian landscape more or less uh, madhya pradesh maharashtra and rajasthan and uh, you know bihar i mean all these states have more or less uh, you know similar way of managing the forest so i think this will be of some use for all of you little okay and i'm start sharing <laughs> so i guess uh, this is visible to you all yes sir Hello, yes sir in one of yeah. yes so like all these people you can you know pin this wildlife management in madhya pradesh slide to your screen so it will be visible to you all right so uh, first i would like to explain the kind of you know landscape where we are working so madhya pradesh has about 94000 plus square kilometer of forest and this is very big chunk of land it is much bigger than many of the states in uh, you know india and that is about 30% of the the state uh, total land mass and we have per capita forest is also 0.13 hectare per person which is almost double or little more than double of national average and <clears throat> we have 52 districts 
and in each district we have some amount of wildlife and some amount of forest even with the district like you know datia or ujjain where there is hardly any forest there is good amount of wildlife and uh, and but we have also a very big population of uh, over 7 crores and that is also as per the uh, 2021 11 uh, census so we are like in 2022 so this uh, population is much much more than that and about 40% of the villages are in the fringe of forest and when i am saying fringe they are about uh, you know within the radius of 5 km from the forest area and we have a very big population cattle population also and obviously those villages those who are on the fringe area they heavily depend upon the the forest and the forest wealth for their livelihood and their daily requirements and put together everything the forest the people the animal they are creating a kind of you know very complex mosaic in which you have forest you have pasture land you have wasteland or the you know farmland also and that is leading to multiple interaction between wild animal cattle and villager so primarily today's wildlife management in madhya pradesh and across the india is not managing wildlife inside your you know protected areas or inside the forest it is mostly managing them in the fringe and in the revenue area <clears throat> and that's a big challenge but despite all these challenge in past years we achieved you know uh, some of the goals which are mandate of the state government and national mandate also so like we have most number of estimated tigers in madhya pradesh 526 was the estimation of 2018 and uh, in 2010 we had uh, estimated number of 257 so we doubled the number in 8 years and the tx2 uh, which was launched uh, in pittsburgh in 2010 that was mandated that we'll double the number in 10 years so thankfully madhya pradesh could manage to achieve that two years beforehand <clears throat> again we have most number of leopards estimated yes but there may be more a uh, leopard in a state like maharashtra because they have a good number of leopards in their farmland also and this particular estimation exercise is only in the forest area so but as per the the all india tiger estimation and the reports published by the wildlife institute in government of india Uh, we have uh, over 3400 leopards and i'm going to show you some maps which will uh, you know give you a uh, special idea about the the leopard and tiger presence dynamics also <clears throat> madhya pradesh has maximum number of gharial but yes uh, many of these gharial in chambal river and as i think all of you must be aware chambal uh, century is a tri state century so the the southern bank is all madhya pradesh and northern bank is partly uh, <coughs> uttar pradesh and uh, partly rajasthan and we have maximum number of vultures and madhya pradesh has you know initiated many novel things one of that is regular vulture estimation so we started since 2016 and every second year we do vulture estimation the last one was done in uh, 2020 and we estimated about 9400 vultures and this number is increasing so every year about 5 600 the vulture population is increasing new colonies are being you know found uh, during this six year span so it's a very healthy sign and madhya pradesh is also pioneer in uh, introducing many novel thing in the uh, field of uh, wildlife conservation in india so now you see we have core area and buffer area in all the tiger reserve but it was first and vision here uh, in kanha fortunately i am delivering this topic from kanha tiger reserve i think uh, so some of you can see the backdrop map that is of kanha not of page so uh, here in kanha the core buffer strategy was introduced way back in 96 7 and later on the government of india adopted this for across the country uh, so then <coughs> madhya pradesh was first to and vision that the the tourism money which we receive through the wildlife tourism in the state should go back to the local community and the local area instead of coming to the cashiers of the government exchanger and later in 2006 government of india adopted the same model for all uh, tiger reserve across india then there is something called active wildlife management so prior to that uh, the wildlife management was uh, largely passive in nature 
so we have our forest areas protected areas we were doing lot of patrolling and protection and we were also doing some kind of you know habitat manipulation and that that's all we were doing but 2008 9 onward we started doing something in a more active manner which again i'm going to explain you in the detail later on and the other state also you know adopting those uh, those you know techniques to manage their wildlife so even uh, in my uh, brief biodata uh, mayank was talking about i have expertise in a uh, shifting of animal from one place to another so like uh, peach has one of the highest density of spotted deer in india and in madhya pradesh but we have much less density as satwa tiger reserve and we are shifting them so how to shift without any casualty without causing any harm or distress to animal so such kind of active management initiative madhya pradesh started in 2010 11 and now we are doing it more often more since i mean you know in terms of the number and diversity is much more as compared to what it used to be the year before then uh, now we all know that there is something called village relocation program of government of india from the tiger reserve and the genesis of this program is from the tribal right act and wildlife act together but madhya pradesh we started village relocation way back in 1967 the first village again been relocated from soft in kanha tiger reserve for the uh, barasingha conservation program so there was no formally barasingha conservation program but the forest official and other bureaucrats along with the scientists they were of opinion that if we need to save barasingha or the swamp deer hard ground swamp deer from extinction <clears throat> we need to conserve some niche habitat for same and soft village was one such habitat and village relocation happened in 1907 and uh, 1967 and now we are doing it more often and as i was talking about there was a time when in 1970 hardly 66 individuals were left free ranging of hard ground barasingha but now we have in kanha alone we have about 1000 plus individuals and we have reintroduced them to to satpura tiger reserve where they are flourishing well and about 100 plus individuals are there at satpura and also uh, a few are in one vihar national park which is at bhopal <coughs> briefly i tell you about the history of conservation so obviously the the heli national park was the first national park in 1935 but the first century Uh, of that uh, period was kanha so that was in 1933 but later on uh, uh, some area notified and denotified finally post independence 1955 there was something called madhya pradesh national park act and kanha was declared as a national park and later madhav and bandhavgarh so these were the first three national parks in madhya pradesh but then comes the wildlife protection act 72 everything got you know back to square one and we started declaring everything as a new and one year after kana became the one of the first tiger reserve as they call the navratna of the project tiger and from the central indian landscape kana was chosen again many people have this misnomer that bandhavgarh was the the part of it which is not the case actually kana been cho chosen as the first nine of project tiger then <clears throat> come the era actually been formed in madhya pradesh the reason behind the then political setup was very keen on creating area you know that the all these you know conservation act a forest conservation act water act uh, all these act were uh, come in that era only that decade only and uh, so so most of the centuries the national park also been constituted in madhya pradesh during that era and the newest among all is kuno national park which was declared in 2018 so that is uh, the newest one and presently we have 11 national park uh 24 century so put together we have 35 protected areas and uh, with the you know clustering of these national parks and century we have constituted six tiger reserves and uh, we have a zoo so one vihar is very unique place one vihar is a zoo one vihar is a national park and one we are also a rescue center 
and we have another zoo in Madhya Pradesh at Mukundpur. We have two more zoo, one at Gwalior and one at Indore, but that is not under control of forest department. The respective or municipal corporation manages them. So uh, the but the management of these two zoo are with us, and we have a dome butterfly park at uh, Raisen. But actually speaking, wildlife management, as I was telling, is not inside the parks, not inside the tiger reserves. I mean, this is something what we are doing for you know years, and we are doing it very swiftly. The real management and the challenge is on the fringe and outside, and uh, so and and on the corridors and everywhere. So now I'll briefly give you idea of the geographical position. So we have six tiger reserve. Both are on the eastern side of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, three are north of Narada River, and three are in Satpura. So you can say three are in Vindhyachal and Mackal, and uh, three are in Satpura ranges. So Kanha, Pench, and Satpura they are in uh, Satpura ranges. Panna is part of uh, Vindhyachal ranges, and uh, Bandhavgarh and Sanjay they are part of Mackal. Then we have created four sanctuaries for endangered bird species. The two on the top are Ghati Gaon and Karera. Both are for GIB, the Great Indian Bustard. Unfortunately, Karera has not seen any GIB for many many years, and the denotification proposal is always uh, already in pipeline. Only the approval by the Honorable Supreme Court is required. Otherwise, uh, the National Board of Wildlife has also given their consent to declare uh, denotify this. Ghati Gaon is still a very good habitat. But unfortunately, is past eight ten years, no sighting of uh, GIB. But we are still quite optimistic, as you all must be aware that with the support of WII in uh, Rajasthan, uh, captive breeding program is ongoing, and uh, soon they will be releasing. And once the bird is released, they may come to Madhya Pradesh side also. And we are also, I mean, hoping to run that breeding program in Madhya Pradesh sometime. But as if now there is no proposal, and the Two protected area uh, on the southern western side are Sailana and Sardarpur. Both are for lesser florican or thermor, as we call in Hindi. So, so there are a very few number. So, about uh, you know, uh, ten to fourteen, fifteen pair come during the monsoon, and then they go back. So, we have four centuries dedicated for only bird conservation, and they are very small centuries. You can see the Sardarpur is even not visible in the map. Uh, then we have three centuries for uh, fresh water ecosystem. So one is National Chambal, as I was telling, it is tripartite thing between Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh. But we have one Kane Gharial century, which is adjacent to Panna Tiger Reserve, and we have Son Gharial uh, century, century, which is next to Sanjay Tiger Reserve, uh, somewhere close to Sanjay and uh, CD district. Then in our urban centers we have protected areas. So one we have national park is in Bhopal and Rala Mandal Wildlife Sanctuary is part of uh, Indore City. So these are the two uh, city, you know, more than a city forest because they are not only forest but protected areas. <clears throat> Then in Madhya Pradesh, because of you know all kind of these uh, activities, we have good amount of uh, you know animal and plant fossil. And we have two national parks dedicated for the fossil conservation. The one on the eastern side is Gugwa Fossil National Park, uh, that is now in Dindori district of Madhya Pradesh. And one on the western side is Dinosaur Fossil National Park. It has uh, one of the largest uh, dinosaur nesting site. You can see the dinosaur eggs over there. A big, you know, clustering of fossil dinosaur egg. Then we have good number of other PA. Mostly they been for the ecological security. No specific animal or I mean, but there is a good forest and uh, the local ecology is very light and we need to protect them. So we have Gandhi Sagar, Madha, Ocha, Narsinghar, Bagdara. Bagdara is very famous for black bucks. Then Khivni. Khivni is considered to be now the western limit of tiger presence in Madhya Pradesh. So it is in Devas district. Very next to the urban center of Indore and Devas, but there is about 10 plus minus tiger inside the sanctuary and surrounding area few more tigers. The the result of all India tiger estimation is awaited, 
once we will get the result we will able to know the exact number then singodi and noradehi uh, singodi and ratapani they are proposed as a, a tiger reserve and hopefully soon they will convert into tiger reserve noradehi is a, a century but in terms of size it is as big as kana about 5000 square kilometer and that is also proposed uh, you know we are proposing it uh, as a as a tiger reserve together with rani durgavati which is very next to uh, this uh, century then we have a pa with a dream as i always call uh, it's a now national park it used to be century we dreamt of uh, having lion unfortunately lion nahi aaye but now we are hoping to get cheetahs very soon and we'll discuss more about the cheetahs introduction program we have you know i, I mentioned about zoo and butterfly park their location but as i was telling the real management happening in the corridor areas and outside the protected areas where it is you know maximum uh, needed over there and these are the activity briefly i'll tell about all these activities so as all forest officers say and believes that protection is paramount so we need to do a lot of protection and uh, so we have a very elaborate and systematic uh, you know patrolling mechanism uh, prevails in state and all the protected area we follow the prescribed module by ntca the, the acronym for the same is m stripe so m stripe is nothing but a software and all the forest guard are provided with a, a, a small you know phone and the phone has this m stripe installed and whenever they are going for the patrolling they will be keep on you know putting their data of the observation of wild animal or their signs or any crime in that app and the park management can download that data and they can analyze and they can see the kind of patrolling it is happening and where it is happening and if there is any deficiency how to you know address the the issue then we do a lot of uh, as we call a special patrolling during the monsoon when accessibility is poor uh, poachers get very active and we do a lot of uh, patrolling during the monsoon then during night as you can understand the illegal activities the probability of having them is high we do night patrolling a lot of and we do a lot of combing operation also within our forest area to see if there are any traces of uh, you know illegal activity then uh, fire is a big challenge for all indian and i think global forest in central india also and as the system in the forest department all the forest official or the forest unit prepare their forest uh, fire scheme as we call it and the fire scheme Uh, has to be approved by the competent authority so for tiger reserve the chief wildlife warden has to approve the fire scheme and accordingly we deploy extra manpower and do fire fighting whenever uh, you know needed then madhya pradesh also started with a uh, new initiative this is obviously not only with madhya pradesh now other states are also following and maharashtra also has done very good in combating organized wildlife crime with their tiger strike force name may be different but same mechanism a team of dedicated official who will be dealing only with the crime almost in a line of cbi <clears throat> and they have done extremely extremely good in past years if you will google you will get to know a lot about uh, there is one ifs officer fortunately my batchmate also mr ritesh sarodhya he been conferred with the clark babin award which is considered to be the oscar of wildlife crime so uh, the first officer from india who been conferred this award for the wildlife crime then we also have good number of sniffer dog they do a lot of you know support to to investigate the crime and to to locate the criminal so that is one uh, noble thing we have both the species german shepherd and belgian melanois belgian melanois was the same species which was there in osama bin laden's tracking so the belgian melanois species like very sought after species we have good number of that species also uh, to detect uh, the forest crime and to help the investigation these are some photographs just to give you feel of the same so uh, on top left uh, we are doing patrolling combing and the lady forest guard is holding uh, a metal detector to see if any trap is you know beneath the, the ground level then on the other photograph we do fire fire line burning to create fire breakers we do also have elephants 
they do elephant patrolling during the monsoon and there is another photograph of night patrolling if you will protect your habitat obviously the wild animal have good breeding capacity their number will grow and then you need to manage your habitat but habitat management only two tasks are there management of grassland and other habitat type depending upon the kind of habitat you have if you have a good woodland you need to maintain it as a woodland if you have a grassland you need to maintain it as a grassland and you need to create sufficient amount of water bodies so that as and when animal require water so there is no no a kind of you know very rational science but many of the scientists and the scientific literature talk about grid of 4 square kilometer so you create grid of 4 square kilometer and if there is a water body within that 4 square kilometer you consider your habitat to be a having sufficient water body if it is less than that you need to create some water body which is perennial in nature again just a few photograph because uh, as you can understand the the land has tendency to grow weed also in big number and we need to replace the weeds by the palatable species so we keep on doing the weeding exercise and dispersal of seed to maintain the sanctity of our grassland because to hold a good population of herbivores you need grassland in central india uh, though in southern india because you know central india the problem is we have either uh, most of the forests are sal forest or teak forest both the plants have uh, non accessible to the herbivores so they depend upon the langur if langur will eat some petiole and drop the leaf then only the the herbivore get, will get something and beneath these tree teak has at least some kind of you know grasses and vegetation sal has zero vegetation beneath uh, the the canopy so we need to manage grassland but where wherever we have uh, miscellaneous forest we don't need to manage it that aggressively that is why the grassland initiatives are more aggressive in central india than the southern part of india and uh, you know other places again few more uh, example of the grassland management also the wa water management we do multiple thing so one photograph you can see that artificially made the you know saucer like structure but that is not the most preferred structure because uh, you know it creates a kind of artificial thing and every time you need to go and pour water the other one next is a stop dam which we create inside forest but it is very expensive it cost about 15 20 lakh to even you know more so one preferred structure is where you can see stop staff is the gunny bag are filled with a cotton soil and will place them so there must be some amount of seepage but from wildlife point of view that's a perfectly okay if some water is seeping out because anyway the water is retained on either side of that you know structure and it is good for wildlife at times whenever we get we dig such water hole also apart from big ponds <clears throat> then another thing what we are doing is doing good amount of village relocation and the genesis of village relocation is as per the wildlife act your national parks tiger reserve has to be in violet area the core area has to be in violet area and in line of that the the tribal right act also says that there will be tribal rights in all the area which are not critical wildlife habitat so what we did we get declared all our core area of the tiger reserve as a critical tiger habitat or critical wildlife habitat and the area which is critical tiger or wildlife habitat it has to be in violet area so we are doing village relocation and earlier the government package was 10 lakhs rupees or a piece of land so both the options are there now it has increased to 15 lakhs rupees per family unit and obviously it is a voluntary process we do uh, do lot of interaction with villagers try to explain them and if they are willful they fill a form then comes the role of district collector district magistrate he send his people they also interact with forest uh, you know dwellers the to those villages and once they, they they also feel that the villagers are in agreement the process starts and uh, we in madhya pradesh has created because we all know that in many of these relocation through the for the dam and mines ended up uh, you know where community were destroyed because they been given cash and the cash been misutilized they drank alcohol 
bought expensive article and after three year or five year they they were on like you know ground. So we created a mechanism where uh, we deposit the money in their account and once they will complete one phase, like once they will bought land, we'll release some money. Once they will start building house, we'll release some money. So in two three year span, we'll slowly release money and we'll do a lot of hand holding. We do keep on interacting with them and see if they are facing any difficulty with respect to the forest department, or maybe with the uh, school admissions, or maybe with the health, <coughs> or maybe with the, their Aadhaar card. So we keep on helping them so that they can, you know, get settled in a nice fashion. I'll show you some photographs. And uh, in Madhya Pradesh, in protected area, we have about 311 villages. This data is little older, maybe a year older. So you can add few more villages. Safely, you can say more than 185 villages already been relocated and over 50,000 family units been relocated and roughly about 125 villages are yet to be rehabilitated. We have also done relocation outside because many of the villages are not in core area, but like they are in part of the corridor area. So from wildlife management point of view, it is important to relocate them. They also feel very deprived. They also feel that they also need modern amenities in their house. They also need a school. They also need a hospital, which is not possible in deep dense forest area. So at times when we get demands outside the core area, we have funds from the state government and we do village relocation outside also. Kana, Paint and Satpura CTH is fully inviolate. We don't have any uh, villages inside the CTH of these three tiger reserves, but the remaining three tiger reserves are still process is going on. Maybe in because as I said, this is voluntary process, so we cannot apply any force on them to uh, to to vacate the village. We'll just keep on explaining when they realize that their their kids are not getting good school education and they are not getting good medical facilities. They themselves come and ask for the relocation, and then only the process starts. So it is no way by force. Here it is interesting fact that uh, Madhya Pradesh government when realized this is not anti-public, this is pro-public and people are very happy being rehabilitated to their new locations. The state government also started providing funds and I guess apart from Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra is only state which realized that this village relocation is not anti-people but it is pro-forest and pro-people and they also started supporting from their state fund. So uh, this is the beauty of it. So uh, the state government of Madhya Pradesh has already spent over 900 crores for the village rehabilitation. So a few photographs after uh, relocation, how their livelihood got, you know, um, is much better. The quality of life, they are farming everything. And you can see how the forests also get benefited. The photographs on my left are uh, of the village. When the village was there inside the the park, this is of Sukha range of Kanha, and once it uh, relocated, now that uh, farmland converted into a beautiful grassland. So it's a win-win situation. Of everything is, you know, increasing. And this map, uh, this graph, you can see the one on the extreme right, uh, the figure showing is 1119 and 2975. So this is number of cattle killed by tiger between 2007 to uh, 8, 9 to 17. So you can see the number has increased three times in six, seven year span. That was the indicator that tiger number is not only increasing, but also dispersing a lot. And this photograph is showing the areas where this cattle kill is happening. So you can see almost barring the extreme north portion, the Shupuri uh, and Gwalior area, all the Satpura and all the Vindhyachal ranges has tiger presence. And if you further see the leopard presence, so you see every square inch of Madhya Pradesh has leopard presence and cattle kill caused by leopard. And that is why we have like, you know, the estimated number is also over 3000, precisely 3424. So now how to mitigate the conflict? As you can understand when tiger and leopards are everywhere, there are a lot many interaction on daily basis and we need to mitigate. On an average Madhya Pradesh, uh, we have about 50 human deaths per annum. Fortunately, because of tiger, only four or five deaths are there. The maximum number of deaths is not because of tiger or leopard, it's because of jackal. 
because he has so people going to the farmland or for their nature jackal and they die so the jackal wild boar and bear have more number of death than tiger and leopard put together and we have this you know compensation policy which is not very huge number like government of maharashtra giving 15 lakhs rupees here in madhya pradesh it is 4 lakh but we are trying to get this increase to some more amount uh, but in madhya pradesh the crop breeding compensation is not with the forest department it is with the revenue authorities and that is a big bone of contention because the villagers feel that the forest department has all the animal kind of their pet and they need to do the 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 compensation proceeding but we help them we do hand holding so roughly about 15 crore rupees we give as a compensation for the death of a cattle human losses cattle injury or human injury we have a very good rescue team with a trained professional wildlife veterinarians and we carry out uh, you know lot of, of rescue operation because of time constraint i have removed all the the rescue videos which can give you uh, idea of how we carry out the rescue operation but if you need i'll provide it to my hand and you can see yourself then rescue is more like a reactive measure once there is a problem you go there and do the rescue operation but you need to do a lot of proactive initiative also you need to create the kind of you know cordial relation with the villagers and we have uh, already we are doing this for many years and decades so we are trying to provide them and them to switch over to alternate source energy sources so that their dependence on fuel wood should get reduced then we are uh, avoid any kind of disease spread we do immunization of cattle village cattle also then as i was uh, already explained that we share tourism revenue so whatever tourism revenue we receive in a year 33% of the same goes to the edcs around the, that particular pa we are also providing lot of vocational training skill development training so the unemployed youth can get you know some jobs we do lot of awareness activity and uh, we do some de development activity but we call them eco development activities so some photograph just to give an idea so we do health camps village immunization alternate energy is that you know gobar gas some kind of you know training and awareness with villagers and we also create small water bodies which is like these water bodies are in the fringe area largely to benefit the wild animal but if their animal also require water they also can use this water and this water uh, the through the seepage their farmland also get benefited so it's a kind of you know win win situation and both these uh, you know all these four photograph depicting that this is about the skill development so our boys are now working at the falaknuma hotel at the hyderabad which is one of the most expensive hotel they we train them in the machinery and the you know related craft security guard heavy vehicle driver all kind of you know job opportunities which they they wish to you know take in madhya pradesh uh, is one of the most popular state when it comes to wildlife tourism so in india if you talk about the wildlife tourism destination in north corbett is very popular west ranthambore is very popular south bandipur nagarhole is quite popular and maharashtra tarobai is very popular so all these state have one or two you know pas which is very popular among tourists but madhya pradesh has kana pench and bandhavgar these three are super popular and panna and uh, satpura are not lagging behind so uh, annually we we receive about over 20 lakhs wildlife tourists in our pas and till last year our revenue was about 30 crores so as i was telling 10% will go for the community and the remaining will be utilized for the management of that particular uh, you know place to do, to promote the eco tourism in the state we are uh, creating eco tourism destination till now we have notified 135 eco tourism destination to get more information about the eco tourism you can explore the website of eco tourism board of madhya pradesh they have tourism activity inside the pa so some photograph of home stay and activities
then conservation awareness is you know a big big uh, uh, management requirement so apart from you know celebrating wildlife week and other uh, activities we have a system where on daily basis we bring the jfmc members to 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 see the forest and to have understanding of what is happening inside because otherwise they are not allowed to venture through any road but we we bring them on vehicle the school boys and girls and also the villagers to have a feel of it and they should also understand why we are protecting this forest and why it is important for them as well then a couple of years before we started a very ambitious conservation awareness program and call anubhuti it's a one day exposure to jungle and wildlife to to school kids and daily about 1.5 lakh kids come for the anubhuti experience some again photographs then we realized that to run this show our, our forest officials cannot do everything in isolation so you we require institutional bodies in our own state so we created a wildlife cell in sfri where there is a dedicated scientist and we do a lot of research and training exercise through the wildlife cell in sfri and that is dedicated unit for madhya pradesh but they also help other states if they 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 they, they request for then wildlife crime and wildlife health we were uh, requiring assistance from outside organization now we created our own facility at Jab Malpur, it is Deshmukh, and there we have this. Uh, so they help us and to manage the wildlife health. And apart from that, at national level, WIL, NCBS, and CCMB we are there to help because the WWF India. WWF, cp covid foundation wpi iwf to name a few but you know these five comes to supporting wildlife conservation in state so wwf india i think you all know wcp is wildlife conservation trust it is mumbai based organization and wpi wildlife trust of india it's a delhi based organization covid foundation is another mumbai based organization and nwf is also mumbai based but they are doing a lot of good activity with community in madhya pradesh madhya pradesh also initiated a novel concept called madhya pradesh tiger foundation society which is more like a ngo arm of forest department and we do lot of activities in a ngo model mostly the awareness activity so this was again a novel concept which was with some modification adopted by the wildlife protection act of 2006 amendment so we have garnered support of 27 crores most of it in in past 6 7 years uh, we have a very good famous campaign called close to my heart when uh, whoever wish to donate us with 300 rupees can donate and we give him a lapel pin and when you wear your lapel pin on your pocket or your jacket the animal remain close to your heart so that's how the campaign got its name and the proceedings go for the welfare of the forest staff so uh, you must all uh, be aware of that 11th of uh, september is forest matters day and on that day uh we uh, in the matters of previous years we invite all the family members and we uh, you know give them uh, some money and honor them during the covid mp tiger foundation society garnered support of about 72 lakhs and distributed ration uh, all across the state for the forest official some forest dwelling communities guides and drivers those who uh, like you know dependent heavily on forest these are a few activities which we which i think i have already explained you i'll talk a little about the innovative approaches which we have achieved so one is rewilding of orphan tiger cubs so it is always considered that only a tiger mother can teach how to hunt and how to survive in wild but we have one officer mr khagendra nayak now he retired and settled in uh, odisha he envisioned ki if we can create a facility where the tiger cubs will rear uh, without any human imprinting and in a way that the way mother teaches them how to hunt so they may learn hunting and we instead of releasing them into 
we can release them in wild normal nahi hai kya this uh, started in 2005 this was what of its kind in india so we got an orphan cub Garam we rescued and we created a facility in kanha tiger reserve and uh, i was also associated with that you know so i know how gradually we created that environment where these cubs learned how to make hunt and how to survive later the first two cubs been released to panna panna tiger reserve when we were doing reintroduction program and they were named as a t4 and t5 of panna they later survived well so when we get expertise till now we have already trained nine you know tiger cubs and released them in wild all of them are doing uh, good so so these are some photographs so these cubs the first cub 2005 those have been rescued a photograph from gorilla the gorilla enclosure and this photograph you can see mr monta is a 97 batch officer presently chief conservator of forest uh, indore and he was there when the this t4 tiger has been shifted to uh, panna then we have also expertise in capturing uh, the the herbivores using the boma capture technique as we call in india in africa they call it mass capture or passive capture and spotted deer black bear and swamp deer all these animal without touching the animal i'll share some photograph that will give you good idea about how boma operates but here i would like to clarify the the gors the one on the top corner not been captured by the boma they been captured by some uh, you know drugs and uh, this black buck on the bottom right corner they also not been captured by boma but slowly we learn the technique and now all the animals we are capturing using the boma i'll explain it a bit later but first about the vulture conservation in indu breeding facility so one of them is in pinjor in chandigarh but one is there at uh, bhopal we call it kerwa facility vulture conservation simply we have 55 vultures and uh, we are about to release them yet we haven't released any one of them so this big you know hall like go down like uh, structure is the vulture facility because they possible and inside that you can see the perching you know floors been erected and there they do nesting so some are like solid form rock on some are like normal village cot where they do nesting and here in one photograph you can see a newborn chick this is vulture map of madhya pradesh and the the districts which are depicted with dark brown color are the having highest density so panna chatarpur shivpuri shyopur mansaur these are the districts with very heavy population and the one the western districts have no population of vulture then another initiative of forest department is about the harial conservation so we don't have a, you know breeding center we collect the egg from the river bank we bring some of the egg precisely 200 in number and they hatch inside our facility every facility as we call it once they become 1.5 meter in length we release them in uh, you know water body to ensure that there should be less mortality those uh, you know hatchings which will born in the facility this is what boma capture here in the photograph shown is when we were trying to do the the capture of blue bull so you can see a structure on extreme right up uh, a triangular shape so these are the wall made of some kind of woven fabric and here in the photograph you see we tried with the helicopter also to drag animals towards the narrow end and narrow end actually ends at the truck so they will keep on running and they will enter the truck without harming or without any, anybody touching them so uh, till now we have done a lot of tiger introduction program we have done at panna and panna some of the tigers were free ranging so we picked one male tiger from pench one female from bandhavgarh and uh, one from kana but as i just told you semi wild tiger also been released then we have done tiger introduction in noradehi also in 2018 we introduced two tigers 
now the noradehi population is about eight tigers and in you know years to come noradehi will be as popular and prosper as other tiger reserve are and as i told that uh, the the discussion is going on that we should declare noradehi also as a tiger reserve then we are doing a lot of you know restocking in satpura and sanjay tiger reserve when i'm saying restocking i mean that whenever we are finding that some tiger is inside you know going to the revenue area and creating conflict we are capturing them and releasing them either in sanjay or in satpura and we are also doing cheetah translocation program to restock the empty villages post relocation these are the few future product uh, projects we have asiatic lion reintroduction which is on shelf as if now but i am pretty confident that because the honorable supreme court has already given the verdict so sooner or later we'll get the asiatic lion and then african cheetah is about to come maybe by august wild buffalo also we are already commissioned a study to introduce wild buffalo in kanha tiger reserve and as i was talking about the breeding program of gib we are also intending to do a breeding program of lesser florican somewhere in western uh, you know madhya pradesh so this is all about what we are doing when i was thinking of what kind of question we asked about madhya pradesh so uh, cheetah introduction is a big you know topic there may be some questions if they will ask about cheetah so the cheetahs they will be coming from namibia and south africa as estimated every year we will get about 8 to 10 or 12 cheetahs and in 5 year span we will be getting 50 cheetah and it is not on sale they are just donating it because they want to ensure that some of the gene pool will be saved in some other continent and later on once they will start flourishing they will take some of the cheetahs and reintroduce back to the african so that they can remove the inbreeding pressure okay and this is happening at kuno one of the most common question is if the cheetah lion tiger and leopard can survive together yes they can very well survive they were present there 100 years before in this very central indian landscape all these four species thriving in same place the other question is the african cheetahs are of savanna land so we don't have savanna land so how they are going to survive so the fact is cheetahs can survive in woodland savanna even in desert and ice line normally because doing filming is very easy in savanna land so most of the videos and film what we see is through savanna i had interacted with the expert uh, from uh, africa and they said kuno is one of the best habitat they have ever seen so uh, last year march when they were visiting before the second phase of covid uh, they were at kuno we, we had a online session and the african expert were also very happy about the status of kuno year before ait is another uh, important thing for you all because all india tiger estimation result is expected maybe by july and uh, we we as a forest officer don't consider that being tiger state or not tiger state that race race is important but this is how the media world is and they will always ask this question whether madhya pradesh will remain tiger state or not so yes as per the trends uh, of the first phase Uh, we have very good presence of tiger all across uh, you know state and hopefully we will increase our number in leap and bounds and if you have any more question i can definitely give answer but i think you all should prepare about all in the tiger estimation a bit then human wildlife conflict as i was telling it is biggest challenge before the forest department recently you have must have all seen that video of a stone pelting on tiger cubs fortunately or unfortunately i was the in charge for the rescue because that was in sydney district and paint is partly in sydney district my headquarters is at sydney and one random video created so much of uproar nobody realized that through the mob of 4000 people the forest official could manage not only to save themselves because if everybody was pelting stone they may pelt a stone on forest official and police official as well but safely be rescued the cubs and uh, but yeah this is a challenge that at times you know tigers are venturing into human human habitat so is before a bear attack on a couple in panna district 
and uh, the couple died uh, preliminary investigation showing first thing they, the bear didn't at the couple at all it killed and it mauled and the the preliminary symptom showing that it was rabid so maybe it was bitten by some stray dog or something so it was rabies affected so it killed and just after the rescue the bear also died which is again a symptom of a rabid you know animal then madhya pradesh is now getting wild elephants from chatisgarh and we have a permanent colony of over 40 elephants in banogar tiger reserve and about 10 elephants a little more than 10 elephants in sanjay tiger reserve and often we are getting elephants in shahdol district dindori district and uh, even mandla district also close to kanha tiger reserve so i think these three are the the biggest challenge with the forest department and also it it can you know attract some questions so you all should uh, you know prepare on them so this is all from uh, my side if you have uh, any questions uh, you may ask thank you thank you sir uh, like we are open to question answer please if you have any questions please you can ask hello uh, good morning sir uh, sir i want to ask about how to manage uh, human and wildlife con conflict is uh, what are the solutions for that so uh, solutions we are it's too late for solutions we <coughs> simply need to mitigate there has to be some uh, proactive measures like you know creating artificial barriers so animals cannot venture into human habitation also to educate people and provide them means and livelihood that they should not also venture into the 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 wildlife domain and to create some barrier in between so this is one but despite all that if a uh, 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 animal is venturing into human uh, human habitation and if there are any negative interaction we simply need to do the rescue and if it is already fatal we need to do the quick transparent and good compensation that is all because the kind of population growth in country and we the forest officer mandated with increasing the population of everything the wild animal the conflict will going to happen and going to increase for sure uh, sir uh, can we say that uh, we should have a means upper limit for uh, how much uh, tiger or how much elephant should be living in a national park or sanctuary so so i mean many people already started talking about that but in the kind of you know socio economic uh, socio political era we are living in uh, it will not be very politically correct for any one of us to say that so i know one officer of mine mr dr pabla who was chief wildlife warden he advocate lot and he authored a couple of book to discuss all these issues but i mean you know nobody appreciates his idea so so i'm not uh, thinking that, i mean it's not possible to 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 keep check on the the number of the animals it's not a solution either Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, sir, sir, I want to ask one question. Uh, like, Kaushal, yeah, please one by one. Both of Kaushal, can ask first, then uh, Kanaram, you can ask. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I had a question regarding uh, arming of forest guard. Should the forest guards be armed? Because recently we have uh, got to near, uh, hear many news regarding killing of the forest guard by the poachers and the other anti-social elements. Yes, and the the forest guard. are already armed some of them are having rifles a good number of rifles and uh in madhya pradesh to the forest rangers also have given revolvers which is not in many of the state and you know the other state like uh, assam and all where the the poaching situation is very green uh, i mean you know they are using but you see the task of a forest guard is very complex most of the forest guard live isolated in a village where their neighbors are at times forest offender so it takes a lot of guts to to even slap your neighbor leave alone using your firearms so despite good number of firearms already been provided to forest guard they feel it very difficult to use them but yes wherever the situation is like if we talk about madhya pradesh 
the Morena and Bhind district where sand mafia is very active. Uh, we are using uh, you know firearms regularly, and whenever it is needed, yes, they should be uh, given firearms. Okay, sir. I want to ask one question. Yes, sir. sir, I want to ask about uh, there was uh, recently there was a fire, there was fire in Srishka Tiger Reserve of uh, Rajasthan. Uh, sir, uh, what is the role of DFO in uh, uh, prevention and uh, response to fire? Uh, fire, and uh, what could be the solution to reduce the fire incident in the wild uh, Indian forests? So, two three things. I'll not comment on what happened in Sariska because I have not been to Sariska, and it will be very stupid of me to comment on that. But your question is very straight. That what should be the role of a DFO to prevent fire? And I'll speak definitely about that. so as i was telling fire we do fire scheme every year based on the fire trends previous years and we all must understand that none of the forests are nature made at least in india all the fires are man made so throughout the year a forest official will book a case for Ill illegal cutting of tree or poaching and during the summer the annoyed villager or villagers will lit fire inside the forest or some careless villager or forest officer somebody will lit you know cigarette and throw the match uh, or wo aag lag jayega so uh, as an dfo of a particular area you need to prepare your fire scheme with great caution keeping the fire trend in past you know years so you will find that certain patch of forest will get burn on certain dates because the nearby annual uh, weekly market was on wednesday so wednesday there is a big congregation of people so the because of carelessness of one or two people every wednesday the fire will happen so in your fire scheme you should mention that wednesday we have to deploy more people even if there is a fire you can you know uh, control that fire immediately so likewise yes, the planning is very important deployment of your forest personnel is very important tools are very <coughs> important earlier we only used to have fire fire beater or sometimes you know brushwood to beat fire but now we have good equipments also we need to use the equipment because inside fire uh, forest it is difficult to have your you know fire water trucks or something like that they, they cannot access but a, a good planning good execution and very good the modern tools can definitely help you to to control uh, fire incidents if it happens i can tell you with my experience you cannot control the number of fires inside forest but you can definitely control the extent of the area affected okay sir thank you okay. rishi uh, raised his hand sir um, my question is uh, sir. yes okay sir uh, sir uh, my question is uh, what are the uh, new technologies which we are uh, which we are using for the conservation of the forest and uh, wildlife areas sir so new technology we are using the that you know gis based uh, tools which are helping us to take better management decision and uh, a lot of new equipment like you know for scanning our area we are using drones also now there is something called ei which are artificial intelligence based cameras uh, deployed on a very tall tower and they will keep on scanning your area like in bhopal city bhopal is one city which has you know tiger within the city and i, I don't know whether I, if you have seen there is one uh, teaser available on youtube also um, tigers of bhopal so you can see they are very much inside but uh, to keep check on their movement we have a camera system which will keep on taking photograph and whenever it will come across a tiger photograph it will give a warning so we are using artificial intelligence based system to identify the tiger and issue you know the alerts so these are few then like you must be aware about the satellite based fire alert system so whenever there is a fire uh, you know satellite will press the heat and it will issue the alert to the particular bead guard and the particular range officer and the dfo that in your division this beat and this compartment has fire so these are few for coming to my mind instantly if more will come i'll definitely let you know thank you thank you sir
good morning sir good morning i have a question sir we often see in the news that the elephants are being hit by the train and getting electrocuted by the electric fences how much we are prepared innovatively to deal with such a, such accidents and uh, how other countries are dealing with uh, with such accidents so i guess your uh, question is about the elephant death due to the power lines yes sir due to the power line as well as uh, hit by the train hit by the train so for the train i think uh, yes. the government of uttarakhand and government of uh, west bengal also has created some kind of you know alarm system whenever there is a elephant on track uh, alarm will ring on both the direction and the driver can be you know make aware that the elephants are there on the track and he can stop the train well in advance and uh, as far as the the elephant death due to power transmission line uh, the insulation or the underground cabling is the solution but that is very expensive very expensive and you see no matter how big we we'll talk about the wildlife conservation in country like india wildlife conservation is yet not the first priority it may be priority number you know x plus you know whatever so the kind of amount it required to insulate your line power lines even like in central india one one of the biggest challenge when it comes to poaching is uh, laying naked wire using the 11 kv line and we are trying hard to uh, you know speak with the the power distribution units that please you insulate they say you pay us money we'll we'll insulate everything so it's a big challenge uh, sorry sir my question was about the uh, uh, like the the elephants are being electrocuted with the electric fence so yeah. like the elephant should not enter to the human places so uh, no, no, no. never ne- i i have not heard you see those electric oh, fence electric fence are power fence which emits only dc and you will get a shock so those power if you are talking about the power fence they cannot kill any human being or elephant if somebody will lay a naked wire your ac current then only oh, somebody and as i was telling to avoid that, a human and human elephant conflicts uh, electric fences were laid down right sir yeah so that fence so i was okay. it doesn't have ac current it has dc current okay sir i request you to read a bit maybe you are confusing between laying a naked live wire and electric fences these two are two different words even as we always say don't use the term electric fence use power fence that's the right word for that you know technique okay sir 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 if time permit can we take few more questions sir if uh, your time permit can we take few more questions mind i cannot hear you uh, sir am i audible sir if time permits can we take few more questions yeah we can for 5 minutes we can take more questions uh, here mind sir mind sir is not audible sir uh, you may ask or i can see pallavi vijay one sir one one yeah, uh, specific please. issue is yes sir sir about the baxwaha case sir can you throw some light on it sir what can be the potential question that can be asked or what we should know to answer those questions in a better way yeah so baxwa being to me as a forest officer was blown out of proportion yet baxwa mine is very close to to panna but uh, if if you see the map of that area and the the area which is required for that hello 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 whereas baxwa has very i i i should i mean not a very good quality forest the way it has been shown there and obviously the country like india need to strike balance between the development aspiration and the 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 conservation so 
uh, I will always, uh, you know, leave this on experts that they should go see the area, and if that area is very crucial for tiger dispersal, that should not happen. But the, if the expert are opinion that the area required for that diamond mining is not that you know big area, and we can definitely spare some area. So I mean it's a very trivial question, but uh, I have a little idea about that landscape. So I can say that uh, area required is 359 hectares, and uh, the chuck of whatever degraded or not degraded forest is quite wide over there. So this is what my opinion. But I think uh, I mean from the interview point of view, you have to take a more balanced uh, you know approach on the same. Question, sir. Sir, there are often news uh, reports that allege that a lot of false claims are put up in Forest Rights Act. Uh, so uh, sir, how should we answer? Yes, sir. Sir, sir, I'm saying that a lot of uh, news media uh, reports allege that false cases are uh, being claimed under Forest Rights Act. Okay. So yes, I mean you know, country like India, always there will be. some people who will be honest and some will be dishonest but there is a uh, process in the law to wean out those false cases and most of us has come across those false cases and we denied the rights so the mechanism is in place and you can very well deny those rights does not have a sunset uh, date Con sunset clause so should we have that or is it fine that we keep on accepting the claims uh, even though we have the uh, risk of false claims so again it's a very you know tricky question if somebody ask you during the interview so i would say that uh, let the law maker decide uh, take the call because they are the one who who represent the public and people's aspiration so so i'll go i'll prefer to go with the law makers you know opinion because they really know what is happening on ground from the other side we as a forest officers has a mandate to protect the forest land and uh, whenever a claim comes to us which is not based on the fact that uh, you know because that timeline of 2006 is very much there and you can use all kind of uh, you know new technologies otherwise there are few directive of government of india also regarding if you can use uh, the gis map or not but yeah that's a you know tricky and difficult question okay so my like, last two questions we can take up and fir jinke sawal chhut jate hain they can post it on the group i'll try uh, to have sir's insight on them and share those with you right so we'll take last two questions because sir has to go sir sir one one more question related to new eia norms it was uh, said that uh, these will uh, in, sir develop uh, tribal areas economically as at the same time they will help in protection of the forest areas how means do uh, how we can justify that new ei norms will do that sunil i haven't gone through the the law so i am not the best person to comment on that okay okay nature monk can ask the right sir i have a question regarding uh, panna tiger reserve and the kane betwa link uh, so regarding that sir what's your views on that and how to approach that issue development and then tiger so conservation I, you know, being a forest official and being somebody into conservation i'll refrain from you know sharing my opinion but if you have any more discussion i'll share my contact detail and we can discuss these all are very trivial questions and answers are even more difficult okay any right, any sir. okay Uh, okay well last question then we'll wind up the session and okay if you have more questions you can always post it on the group and i'll try uh, to uh, get dead mansa from the sir right so if somebody want to ask the last question or we can end it here so, so i think sir we can end the session here so it was truly insightful and helpful for us sir thank you for the time and you know the energy you put in here thank you thank you very much thank you for having me Thank you sir